Ford and Toyota are ending their relationship with their dealers. And let me tell you, it's not just a minor shakeup. It's a full-blown revolution in the auto market. Seriously, can you believe it? We're talking about a seismic shift that's going to leave traditional dealerships in the dust. Think about it. Technology is advancing fast. Consumers are demanding more convenience than ever, and economic pressures are squeezing every industry like a vice. It's a perfect storm that's forcing Ford, Toyota, and almost every other car maker to rethink how they connect with us, the buyers. The old school dealership model? It's about to become as outdated as a horse and buggy in the age of electric vehicles. Now, you might think this is a good thing, but this move is like a double-edged sword. There is a dark side that nobody is talking about. Let me explain. But first, what's their plan? Well, this isn't just some minor tweak to the system. It's a complete overhaul that's going to change everything we know about buying cars. Imagine a world where you don't have to spend your Saturday haggling with a salesperson in a polyester suit. Instead, you're going to be scrolling through options on your phone, customizing your ride like you're picking toppings for a pizza. It's a digital-first strategy that's tailor-made for our fast-paced, I-want-it-now world. But why should you care about all this? Well, my friends, this is a landmark moment that's going to redefine how we think about buying cars. It's like we're witnessing the birth of a new era. But what's in it for us? The buyers. For what feels like forever, the auto industry has been propped up by dealerships. These places weren't just where you bought your wheels, they were the heart and soul of the car buying experience with the gleaming showrooms, that new car smell, and salespeople who knew your name and probably your coffee order. It was like a cozy little ecosystem where manufacturers churned out cars, dealerships became their homes, and we, the eager buyers, flocked to find our dream rides. Now, don't get me wrong, this setup wasn't all bad. There was something kind of magical about walking into a dealership, feeling like a kid in a candy store surrounded by shiny new vehicles. You'd chat with your salesperson, maybe it was good old Bob who sold you your last three cars, and there was this sense of community. It felt personal, you know? These dealerships weren't just selling cars, they were selling an experience. From the moment you stepped in to browse to the day you brought your car back for its first oil change, they had your back. It was like having a car guardian angel with a commission. But here's where things get sticky. This dealership model? It's got so much issues. Ever tried haggling over a car price? You walk in thinking you're going to score the deal of the century, and before you know it, you're trapped in this bizarre dance of opaque pricing and negotiations that seem to go on forever. It's like being stuck in a time loop where the price keeps changing, and you're never quite sure if you're getting a good deal or being taken for a ride. And not the fun kind. Transparency in this process. That is just your dream. The whole ordeal is shrouded in more mystery than a spy novel. You're left scratching your head, wondering if the price you're being offered is fair, or if the guy in the next booth over is getting a better deal just because he wore a lucky tie. Yeah, this process is so confusing, it makes think like a madman. This lack of clarity doesn't just slow things down, it erodes trust. And don't even get me started on efficiency, or rather the lack thereof. Remember the last time you bought a car? Did it feel like you aged a year just waiting in the showroom? The back and forth between you, the salesperson, and the mythical manager in the back office is enough to make you want to give up and just buy a bicycle. It's a paperwork marathon, a test of endurance. And finally, just when you think you've got everything figured out, bam, they hit you with the extended warranty, the premium floor mats, the super duper anti-rust coating that you absolutely can't live without. This whole labyrinth of uncertainty turns what should be an exciting milestone, buying a new car, into a frustrating ordeal that leaves you feeling more exhausted than exhilarated. It's a system that's been chugging along for decades, but let's be real. In today's world of one-click purchases and instant gratification, it's starting to feel as outdated as a flip phone at a tech convention. The question is, are we ready for a change? Because change is coming whether we're ready or not. So what's the plan here? Well, by kicking dealerships to the curb and going straight to us, these auto giants aren't just making our lives easier. They're snatching the steering wheel of their own destiny and flooring it. No more middlemen, no more haggling with Bob in his polyester suit. It's just you, your dream car, and a direct line to the manufacturer. Mind-blowing, right? These companies are about to take control of their brand perception like never before. They're rewriting the rules of the game, and trust me, it's going to change everything about how we buy cars and interact with these behemoth companies. It's not just a new chapter. It's a whole new book.
We're living in a world where you can order a gourmet meal, book a vacation, and buy a designer outfit all before your morning coffee gets cold. So why the heck should buying a car be any different? It's 2024, people. We want our car buying experience to be as smooth as our phone screens. Think about it. Why drag yourself to a dealership on a perfectly good Saturday when you could be customizing your dream ride from the comfort of your couch, still in your PJs? With just a few taps and swipes, you could be choosing your color, adding those fancy rims, and even sorting out your financing. It's not just convenient, it's a revolution on wheels. I am not saying that we're not just lazy, okay, maybe a little, but the reality is we're smart consumers who are sick and tired of smoke and mirrors. We want simplicity, we crave transparency, and by God, we demand to know exactly what we're paying for. No more hidden fees lurking in the shadows like monsters under the bed. Gone are the days when we'd willingly subject ourselves to the stress of negotiation, feeling like we need a PhD in psychology just to buy a car. We're done playing detective, trying to decipher confusing dealership playbooks. This shift isn't just a trend, it's a full-blown rebellion against the old way of doing things. Remember when Warby Parker came along and made buying glasses cool and easy? Or how Dollar Shave Club turned the razor industry on its head? These guys didn't just disrupt their industries, they blew them wide open. They took a simple idea, cut out the middleman, go straight to the consumer, and turned it into gold. The result? Customers are happier, loyalty is through the roof, and sales are booming like fireworks on the 4th of July. These success stories prove that when you keep things simple, transparent, and customer-focused, magic happens. So, why in the world shouldn't the automotive industry take a page out of this playbook? It's not rocket science, folks. By embracing transparent pricing, streamlining the buying process, and talking directly to us, the customers, car manufacturers, can tap into a gold mine of insights. They'll finally understand what we really want, not what some dealership thinks we want. Which brings me to the next topic. Big data. Hold on to your seatbelts, folks, because we're about to dive headfirst into the data-driven future of car buying. You think data is just a fancy word thrown around by tech geeks? Think again. It's the secret sauce, the magic potion, the very lifeblood that's about to transform how we buy cars forever. Let me break eight down for you. Ford and Toyota, those automotive giants we all know and love, are about to pull off the heist of the century. But instead of stealing cash, they're after something far more valuable our data. And guess what? We're probably going to hand it over willingly with a smile on our faces. By kicking those middlemen dealerships to the curb, these companies are setting themselves up for a direct line to our brains. Okay, not literally, but close enough. They're not just tracking what we buy anymore. They're diving deep into the recesses of our car-loving minds. They'll know what makes us tick, what features make us drool, and probably what color we want our next ride before we even know it ourselves. Imagine waking up one day to a notification. Hey there, speed demon. We noticed you've been eyeing those sporty models. How about a test drive in our latest turbocharged beast with a side of discount to make it easier for you? It's like they're reading your mind, right? That's the power of personalization. The writing's on the wall, clear as day. The auto industry can't afford to be the slow poke in this race. It's time to put the pedal to the metal, shift gears and zoom into the future at full speed. The road ahead is wide open, full of possibilities, and frankly, it's about damn time. See, Ford and Toyota are cooking up some seriously slick online platforms that'll make buying a car feel like a walk in the park. Actually, scratch that. It'll be even easier. We're talking about browsing models, configuring your dream ride, sorting out financing, and sealing the deal, all from the comfort of your couch. But with it, you need to accept the introduction of AI and data analytics. It's like having a super smart, car-obsessed best friend who knows exactly what you want. These automakers are using cutting-edge tech to create marketing strategies that'll make you feel like the only customer in the world. That is how soon you could be seeing an ad for a car that checks all your boxes. Fuel efficiency, sleek design, that new car smell before you've even started your search. It's not creepy, it's personalized. This isn't just random advertising, it's like Ford and Toyota are reading your automotive diary and crafting the perfect pitch just for you. Now, I know what you're thinking, this sounds a little too good to be true. What's the catch? Well, you're not wrong to be a bit skeptical. There's always a flip side to the coin, isn't there? The dark side. Let's address the elephant in the room, privacy. 
Yeah, that word that makes us all a little squirmy these days. No one wants to feel like they're being watched, analyzed, and turned into a statistic. It's like that creepy feeling you get when an ad pops up for something you just talked about. Spooky, right? But in this digital age, data is king. It's not just valuable, it's practically priceless. Every click, every customization, every hmm, maybe not moment as you browse, it's all being logged, analyzed, and used to build a profile of you as a consumer. It's like they're assembling a puzzle, and each interaction is another piece that helps them see the big picture of what you want in a car. Think about it. When you're configuring your dream car online, choosing between leather or cloth seats, deciding on that snazzy sound system upgrade, you're not just making choices for yourself. You're feeding valuable information back to the manufacturer. It's like you're unknowingly part of the world's biggest focus group. And it doesn't stop once you drive off the lot or have your new car delivered to your driveway because, you know, it is the future. The data keeps flowing. How you use your car when you bring it in for service, even how you interact with the car's own smart systems, it's all valuable intel that shapes future designs, marketing strategies, and who knows what else. It's a brave new world, folks. But here's the million dollar question. Are we ready for this level of convenience and personalization if it means giving up our privacy? Are we willing to trade our data for a smoother, more tailored car buying experience? Will the public watch this happen in silence? Well, only time will tell us the answer. But for Ford and Toyota, this is about survival. Let's talk about it. Survival of the fittest. See, the old model costs a lot of money to these automakers, but don't just take my word for it. Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, just said it himself. Can you believe it costs Ford a mind-boggling $2,000 more per vehicle to stick with their old-school dealer model compared to the direct-to-consumer dealer-free approach? It's like they're setting stacks of cash on fire. Two-thirds of that extra dough is just being burned on ads and keeping cars parked on lots. Seriously, it's like paying rent for cars to work on their tans. But Ford's recent hits, the Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning, flew off the virtual shelves fast, and they didn't even need a massive ad blitz. Turns out happy customers are the new billboards, and they're way more effective than those cheesy TV commercials. But here's where things get wild. According to dealerships, these electric beauties aren't exactly flying off the lots. They're reporting a surplus of Machas and Lightnings with oversupply in the market while demand stagnating. It's like throwing a party and realizing you've ordered way too much pizza. So how did this happen? Well, many EV buyers are giving dealerships the cold shoulder, preferring to shop online. They just want convenience. But don't think for a second that Ford's letting the speed bump slow their EV momentum. Oh no, they're doubling down. They're pumping so much cash into production, it's like they're printing EVs instead of money. Ford's itching to recreate that initial sales frenzy, and they don't want to face shortages when the EV craze finally hits fever pitch. The result? Dealership lots serving as new EV junkyards. It's gotten so bad that some dealers are actually saying no to new allocations. Talk about adding gasoline to an electric fire. This just makes Ford even more angry at them. For Ford, this is like a money pit, sucking up cash without any return. We're talking real estate costs, inventory management, and staffing expenses that could fund a small country. All these costs, they're not vanishing into thin air. They're showing up on your bill when you drive off the lot. So getting rid of dealerships is almost necessary for survival and customer satisfaction. So what could they do with all these savings? Well, they could pass the savings on to us, the consumers making their cars more wallet friendly, or they could pour that cash into R&D, potentially unleashing a tsunami of innovation in electric and self-driving tech. Heck, they could even use it to fatten up their bottom line, making shareholders grin from ear to ear. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. While the potential for savings is huge, it's going to take some serious upfront cash to make it happen. We're talking digital infrastructure that would make Silicon Valley drool, logistics networks so complex, and new levels of customer service capabilities. It's a bit like renovating your entire house. Painful in the short term, but so worth it when you're finally kicking back in your dream home. It is so exciting. So they tried it and they failed. Why? Let's know about it. Trial and errors. Remember Toyota's Smart Path program? Back when Toyota, the car-making giant, decided to dive headfirst into the digital age. Their mission? Create an online car buying experience so smooth you'd think you were ordering a pizza. With everyone and their grandma shopping online these days, it seemed like the perfect time to make waves. 
But boy, oh boy, did they learn that even the best laid plans can go off the rails fast. So what went wrong? Well, for starters, Smart Path was like a shiny new sports car with a rusty old engine. Sure, it looked great on the outside, a fancy platform where you could browse cars and build your dream ride virtually. But when it came to the nitty gritty of pricing, it was like trying to navigate a minefield blindfolded. You see, those sneaky dealer markups were still lurking in the shadows, ready to pounce on unsuspecting customers. Imagine the disappointment. Talk about a trust buster. And the dealerships, those old school titans of the car selling world, weren't exactly happy with this newfangled system. Can you blame them? They've been running the show for decades and suddenly Toyota wants to change the game? It's like telling a lion to become a vegetarian. Not going to happen without a fight. These dealers dug their heels in harder than a mule, fearing that this direct-to-consumer approach would turn their profits into pocket change. So there was Toyota, stuck between a rock and a hard place. On one side, the allure of innovation and the digital future. On the other, a network of dealerships ready to throw a wrench in the works. The result? Well, let's just say the market's reaction was about as exciting as watching paint dry. Smart Path limped along, but no one actually liked it, leaving them back at square one, scratching their heads and wondering, what the heck do we do now? So they looked at the rebels of the auto world, Tesla. Now these guys, they've cracked the code. Their direct sales model isn't just successful, it's a runaway freight train of awesomeness. What's their secret? It's simple, really. They've created an online experience so slick, it makes buying a car feel super easy. No dealer drama, no haggling headaches, just you, your computer, and a whole lot of car buying satisfaction. It's like they've taken all the pain points of traditional car buying and zapped them into oblivion. But Tesla didn't stop there. Oh no, they went full throttle. Fixed pricing? Check. No more feeling like you're in a gladiator arena every time you want to buy a car. And brand loyalty? Double check. Plus, these folks have insight into what their customers want that's so spot on, it's almost scary. It's like they've got a crystal ball or something. And let's not forget the bells and whistles. Virtual test drives that make you feel like you're in a sci-fi movie? Yep. Personalized online chats that make you feel like a VIP? You bet. The whole package is wrapped up in a bow of next-gen tech that gets people more excited than kids on Christmas morning. Ford and Toyota are looking at this and thinking, holy moly, we've got our work cut out for us. Other car companies aren't just sitting on their hands watching Tesla zoom by, too. Nope, they're trying to get in on the action, too. General Motors and Volkswagen. They've been dipping their toes in the direct-to-consumer waters, but let me tell you, it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows. GM tried to launch their own direct sales platforms, but oh boy, did they hit a brick wall. The dealers threw a fit that would make a toddler's tantrum look tame. It was like watching a high-stakes game of tug-of-war, with GM caught in the middle trying to innovate without making their dealers blow a gasket. Talk about walking a tightrope. Volkswagen, on the other hand, is taking the slow and steady approach. They're testing the waters in different markets, trying to find that sweet spot between pleasing customers and not ticking off their dealers. It's like they're playing a giant game of chess, making careful moves and planning 10 steps ahead. Slow going, maybe, but at least they're moving forward, even if it's at the pace of a snail. So what does all this mean for Ford and Toyota as they gear up for their own DTC adventures? Well, it's like they've got front row seats to the greatest show on earth. The hits, the misses, the epic fails, and the stunning successes of their competitors. They've got a gold mine of lessons right at their fingertips. Every flop is a warning sign. Every success a potential blueprint. As they rev up their engines for this new race, you can bet they're studying this patchwork quilt of attempts like it's the most important exam of their lives. They're looking at Toyota's smart path stumble and thinking, note to self, don't forget about those pesky dealer markups. They're eyeing Tesla's triumph and wondering, how can we bottle that secret sauce? And they're watching GM and Volkswagen's cautious dance, taking notes on how to keep their dealer networks from having a collective meltdown. But you know who else is doing this? Dealerships. The fight for power. The dealerships aren't about to roll over and play dead. Oh no, they're pulling out all the stops, and let me tell you, it's like watching a high-stakes poker game where everyone's going all in. First up on their playbook, the legal shuffle. These dealerships are flexing their muscles in the halls of power, pushing hard to keep those franchise laws in place. You know, the ones that say automakers can't just walk in and sell cars directly to you in most states. 
It's like they've built a fortress around their business model and they're not about to let Ford or Toyota knock down those walls without a fight. And in some states, like Florida, they've gone even further. They've cooked up laws that basically imply that old school automakers can't do this direct to consumer thing. But new kids on the block? Go right ahead. Talk about playing favorites. It's like telling the unpopular kids they can't sit at the cool table anymore. Now you might be thinking, surely the dealerships can see the writing on the wall, right? Well, some of them are. And these folks are nothing if not creative. Some of them are pulling a complete 180, transforming themselves faster than a chameleon. They're saying, you want to buy directly from the manufacturer? Fine. We'll just become the go-to place for all your car fixing needs. But here's where it gets really interesting. Some dealerships are trying on a whole new hat, the agency model. Instead of haggling over prices like you're at a flea market, these dealerships are now playing matchmaker between you and the manufacturer. Fixed prices, no funny business, it's like they're trying to have their cake and eat it too, staying in the game while adapting to this brave new world of car sales. So what does all this mean for you, the average Joe or Jane looking to buy a new set of wheels? Well, it's like the Wild West out there right now. On one side, you've got the big automakers trying to sell directly to you, promising a smoother, haggle-free experience. On the other, you've got dealerships fighting tooth and nail to stay relevant, throwing everything but the kitchen sink at the problem. The big question is, who's going to come out on top? Will the dealerships manage to reinvent themselves and stay in the game, or will Ford and Toyota change the car buying landscape forever? What do you think? Let's know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.